This week, we'll wrap up our LCL map by taking our observations, plotting them, then gridding them so we can contour them. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. Just to remind you where we were last week, we had taken a bunch of radio sound observations. We had found their positions from a text file from ruck.noaa.gov. And then we had calculated the LCL for each of those stations that we could calculate one for. And we got this huge list of LCL pressures. So this week, we're going to plot that data on a map and then grid it up. So as with all mapping, we're going to do some imports from Cartapi. I'm going to import the Cartapi Coordinate Reference System, or CRS, as CCRS, Cartapi.feature as CFeature, and of course mapplotlib.pyplot as PLT. I'm going to go ahead and create an instance of the coordinate reference system that I want to make my map in, which is Lambert Conformal, Central Longitude, it's going to be minus 100, Central Latitude is going to be 45, and my plot bounds are going to be minus 122 and minus 75 in longitude, and at 25 and 50 in latitude. That's a nice conus view. We'll go ahead and create our figure as plot.figure. The fig size we're gonna go with 12 by nine. I'm gonna create an axis And we have to use the add subplot. You saw that I started doing the uh, the normal way that I make matplotlib figures, which is subplots, where I create the figure and the axes all at once. But since we're going to specify a projection, we need to use the add subplot method. One row, one column, and we're going to work on the first plot. The projection is going to be the coordinate reference system that we defined as CRS. Going to add a couple of geographic features from C feature. I'm going to use the coastline and I'm going to specify the 1 to 50 million scale. And we'll go with a 0.75 line width. And we'll add the feature C feature dot states. And line width on that is going to be 0 0.5. Now we're going to go ahead and scatter plot our data. We've got lawns, we've got lats. I'm going to color those by the LCL pressures. And of course, don't forget to specify our transform because our data are not in Lambert conformal coordinates. Our data are in latitude and longitude, which are also known, if you remember, as plat curry, flat plate. And finally, we're going to set the extent. We're going to use the star to unpack bounds into here. And again, we need to tell what coordinate reference system those are in. They are also in plat curry. And of course, we get a, a typo error. And now we've got a map, but there isn't any data on it. So what's happening? Why didn't our lats and lawns show up on the map? We've specified the bounds correctly. We've got lawns and lats, so we're in the correct order there. We've specified a transform. We're in the right geographic region. We've got our states. 
So I don't see any problems in our code here. So let's add a cell and let's look at our lawns and lats. Uh-huh, something already looks suspicious here. So these longitudes are all positive longitudes. Let's look at the lats. Okay, the latitudes are all positive and that looks sensible. So what it appears has happened here is our text file is giving us some potentially misleading information. So let's go look at that file once again. We'll just put it right in our browser here. Okay, so let's find something that... Here's a Fort Smith, Arkansas. A latitude and a longitude. So again, we're going to put that into Google. And where does that latitude and longitude come out to? Yeah, that's not correct. That is not Fort Smith, Arkansas. Now, if we put a minus in front of the latitude values, we're back in Fort Smith, Arkansas. So probably the easiest place to fix this is here. We're just gonna put minus longitude in our lawns.append. I'm gonna go back down and run all of our cells. Now I'm sure this was documented somewhere, but it certainly wasn't in just the plain text file that we saw. All right, so now we have dots on the map, and this is great. We can see that we've got higher and higher with uh, lower LCLs out here right now. But I'd like to contour this. Contour requires a grid of regular observations. So how are we going to do this? We're going to interpolate it to a grid. From metpy.interpolate, We're going to import interpolate to grid. Now for this to work, we need actual arrays, not lists, which is what we have now. So we're gonna go ahead and make those lists arrays. LCL pressures. And now we can interpolate. So our interpolate to grid function is going to return our interpolated x, our interpolated y, and our interpolated z value. We're going to call interpolate to grid. Our x is lawns, our y is lats, our z is LCL pressures. There are several different types of interpolation. We're going to use Cressman interpolation, and going over those types is a potential topic for a future video. And we're going to grid it to half degree increments. This works in whatever units the data you pass it are. So we're in degrees, we're going to grid to half degree. And now we can make our map again. So what I'm going to do is copy our map code from here and paste it down here. We're just going to add on to the bottom. We're going to use contours. I'm gonna grab a handle to them just to be useful later. Our interpolated X, our interpolated Y, our interpolated Z. I want to just make all the lines black, one wide, and solid. We're going to go ahead and specify a transform because it is not in native map coordinates of Platte Curry. And the levels, I'm going to do a pretty wide range of levels here, 300 down to 1100 HPA in 20 HPA increments. And finally, We'll use that handle to create contour labels. 
And so there we go. Now we have our gridded LCLs on a map, contoured, and we even have the stations plotted and colored as well. So you can see where you might have poor data coverage, for example. You could certainly do more than this. You could add contours of LCL temperature. You could color dots by temperature. You could shade by LCL temperature. There are lots of permutations you could do on this map. But I thought it was a valuable exercise to see how we go from a big stack of text tables to calculating thermodynamic parameters to gridding those parameters, finally being able to contour them on a map. And this is something you could even compare and difference model output with. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.